I've got some mail. Let's see what's in here. I'm trying a different camera angle out in case I can get a better focusing arrangement because I've tried changing some settings on my camera in the hope that it will improve the quality. We'll see how we go with that. Could make it worse. It's not going to work, is it? Not today. Oh, that's in that's not going to work either. Now the date on this packaging was from May. So this has taken ages to arrive by the time you see this video. It might even be September because I've got quite a few videos queued up. I've got a few anyway. So let's see what we get. What took all that time to arrive? I've been buying so much stuff already, I don't have a clue. It's well packaged, I'll give them that. I have an idea what this is actually. And if it is what I think it is, this has been a long time coming. Yes, it is. Okay. Picked this up from eBay. It's a Heathkit DK condenser box. So it's basically a capacitance box. Got some damage over here. Some ding, stuff like that. Doesn't really matter much. I wonder, is this the one which went missing? I had some stuff not turn up. And I wonder if this is one of the things which didn't turn up. I might have to look into that. I've been buying so much stuff, I'm losing track of what's coming and what's not. And I basically, if I've got it, I'll mark it on my eBay as a note saying I've received it. I had some stuff which hadn't been received for, you know, a while. And as this is Martha's May, this might be something my Martha's not received. So if you happen to be a person who sent this to me and I've got a refund or something, maybe get in touch. <laughs> it's possible that I need to give you some money. Hmm, I screw right off. It's interesting. Don't normally do that. Right, so we should probably check this out and plug it into something and see what actually comes out of it. Right, let's try this out. It's currently set at 1kHz. Got it set to zero right across the range. It says 7 picofarad. I'm guessing that zero means this is short, is it? Don't actually know. If it's a short, I should be at read resistance instead. Right, anyway, let's try this. Times 100 mmf. So that's picofarad. Hundreds of picofarad. Okay. I don't know about the accuracy of this thing, I mean it's an old box, it's just a substitution box and that's what I got it really. Anyway, so yeah, 1000 is there. Okay, let's check it strange as well, and this one. Sorry, it's probably not a particularly exciting video. Maybe I'll skip it forward or something, so there's 1000 there. Accuracy is not perfect, they're all sitting a bit high. And 10, yeah, those are all working fine. Next one. I don't know what capacitors are inside here, we should actually have not have a look, shouldn't we? That's flicking on Picoferro for some reason, come on. Try a different range. So 20 nanofarad ish, it's jumping around a little bit. Let's try 10, maybe this has got some dirty contacts on this one. Now it's doing 10. 30. Yeah, it could of course also be the frequency because I'm running at 1 kilohertz. 40, 50, 50. which is a bit faster to update. No. But I could probably use my alternator actually, my, um, my signal, because that could probably read quicker. So that's 10 nanofarad as well. Well, that's not right, is it? That's 70. This is supposed to be 80. It's 10. Hmm. Oh, I did 80 then for a second. There's 90. Go back again. Now it's doing 80. Mate, I think he's got some dirty connections in here. And there's 100. It's basically 100 or 0. 100 picofarad up to um, 100 nanofarad. So, a fairly small range, but hey, sometimes these things are hand in half. Seems to work alright, it just needs a bit of a clean, not a big deal. Let's open up and have a look inside. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Give me a, a thumbs up if you like the video content that I make, like this video or any other videos I make, just give me a thumbs up. If you feel so inclined, share the video to your friends, social media, whatever. I keep saying this pretty much, well, I do have to say this every video, because no one's seen it. Now, each time I do a video, 
there's new people to the channel which I haven't seen my stuff before, so I have to keep repeating myself, which is a bit annoying, but sorry. It's a YouTube thing. Oh, there's more screws in the bottom. Okay, that's all that's in there. Some wax film caps. These are yeah, those are waxy caps. Very old. Uh these are 1% caps, plus or minus 1% apparently. So it's done in banks and it switches the appropriate capacitors in and out, obviously. Well, I might give these switches a bit of a clean while I'm in here, because, you know, why not, whilst it's apart. So let's get some deoxy here. So I'm just going to give us a quick refurb, I'm not going to do too much with it. I mean, it's a pretty basic thing. Um, no, just get, get a deoxy on these. I guess it'll run over them. I'm not quite sure if there's terminals on the back or not, but I'm going to spray there anyway. Right. This sort of thing you need to do, really. Bit of gear, just a bit of cleaner, work the knobs a little bit. I haven't seen this style of capacitor before, it's, it's a bit of an interesting one. I guess they're pretty old. Well, this is a fairly old unit. It doesn't actually have a date on it. So the model IN21 Series 533-7204. Does that mean 7204 is the year? Is that so? Is, this is 72. I would believe 72. Sort of era these things came out in. Wouldn't surprise me if it was 72. Look in there. Yep, yeah, the gun come off there. Getting cleaner. So I might even give that a second go. Let's look at this dent on the chassis. Let's see if I can straighten it out. Although I might end up taking the paint off. <laughs> let's um, see what we can do about this. Right, let's give this a go. Bit of bubble wrap just so it's got something between these and the casing to help protect the paint. And we'll try and bend it around. Too bad. Could probably use a bit of panel beating, really. What do you reckon? A bit of panel beating. This is going to be loud on the camera. I'll come back. Okay, fairly straight. Good enough. It's certainly straight, and it was when I got it. And uh, let's give us a bit of a wipe around inside. There's bound to be some dust and stuff in here. I want to get rid of that. Not too bad, actually. Just a very really quick little refurb. Because you've got any dust inside the casing, what can happen is it can come loose, float around, and end up getting stuck in the switches. You don't want that happening, do you? Which is why I'm bothering to do this. Yeah, see? There's a bit of dust in there. Let's put it back together. I'm sure it works better. What could possibly go wrong? Hmm. Alright, here we go. Cleaned up a little bit. Let's, uh, do another quick measurement on it, just to make sure it looks alright. Alright, so set back up again. Let's just go through very quickly. I'm not going to check every range like I did before. Just do some random ones. See if they look about right. Yeah. See if they're looking like they're behaving. 1000. Yep. Yeah. It actually looks like it's responding slightly faster too, but it could be because the capacitor is charged up slightly. See 1000 on that one. Yep. Yeah. 400. Well, 40. 4NF. Seven, eight was playing it, wasn't it? Let's try eight. Yep. Nine and ten. Hmm. Might still be some issues there with some dirt. Could even be these terminals up top. Yeah, it might be these terminals up here. These aren't the best kinds of connections for this. No, oh, it's getting closer. All right. Let's take next range. So 10 and F, nanofarad, should use the right word, shouldn't I? Let's do a 5 here, it's looking good. Do a 10 on there. Yep, yeah, that's looking alright. Now what's one of these which I thought was a bit suspicious? Which was that, was it 4? 3 or 4? Around there somewhere was it? Or was it this one I'm thinking of? 
Yeah, but they're looking right. Do four, three and four around here. Try those. Yeah, they're looking right. Three or four around here. I can't remember which one it was now. Three ten. It might be this one actually. I was looking at. Yeah, yeah. That's behaving now. That's fine. So, all good. I reckon that's pretty good. Um, the things about these kinds of boxes is that if you really wanted to, you could recap it and put some really high quality brand new caps in and end up with a really nice box. Um, obviously they've got those parallel systems and they've got some weird values in there and to combine them to get the right values. There's no reason why you can't replicate that. You get the same value caps and just higher quality, higher accuracy, chuck them in. You know, better Temcos, that kind of thing. Anyway, it's not a bad little box. No, that's just the first thing. And you thought because I only had four items it was going to be a short mail bay. No. <laughs> right. These also took quite a while to arrive actually. These are just in, in well, they're chassis mount fuse holders, aren't they? These are 20mm holders. No fuses, unfortunately. But uh, you've got this little nylon washer on there as well. Nylon washers each side. So there's no keying on that, it's just round. So these are rated at what, does that say? 15 amp, 125 volt, or 10 amp at 250 volt. There you go. So this is a local item. I'm not sure, well I've got some suspicions about what it could be. I guess we'll find out shortly. Ah, it's another iPhone. So I've been buying iPhones recently. Oh, is that a brand new front panel on that thing? I mean, I've decided to start buying broken iPhones to see if I can do some like repairs, get some which have got good logic boards, bad cases, that kind of thing, or phones with minor faults that are unlocked. Um, this is like it's got a brand new front panel on it because that's a front panel protector. Hmm. And this is a iPhone 6S, and it actually looks like it's in pretty good condition. That looks nice, actually. That looks like the board looks after. So let's see if it'll power up, shall we? No power? Okay. I happen to have a cable here. Because I was fixing one yesterday, so. Let's see if it will boot up once it gets some charge into it. So apparently I just went and checked the listing information about this particular phone. The issue has got a drain problem. So it's showing a fat battery right now, you probably can't see it on there. And it's apparently charging 1.3 amps right now. So it's listed as having a battery drain problem. So it's probably got a couple of things that could be wrong with it. So it's either the TriStar chip or it's the Wi-Fi chip. Most likely, because there's no physical damage on it. It's a hot milk glue. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Always some kind of piece of stuff. Anyway, I might take this screen out and have a look. Obviously it's got a fault, I'm going to have to take the screen out anyway. But this, like, this is a little project I'll do a video on hopefully. I'm hoping I can get it back. Because if I can get this thing to at least power up, then we can look at it and make sure that functionally it's there. And then if that's all okay like it's supposed to be, get it charged up enough to power it and see what's going on. And see if it functions. If it functions okay, then I'll go to the next steps and uh, trying to fix the battery drain problem. I've ordered some parts, but I do have a phone here. Another success, which is dead. iCloud locked, dead screen, dead home button. Battery is a bit low, 77% health. Otherwise, it's functional. This is the one which I swapped out. I did a video on this. You know, check that out. Check the playlist at the end. Maybe I'll show it in there. So I've got a logic board in here, which is otherwise functional, but is iCloud locked, which is kind of irritating, really, this whole iCloud lock thing, because it's really hard to get it unlocked. You know, even if you legitimately buy one, this is an insurance written off item, so it's not been stolen. It's been claimed as an insurance written off item. It's not the same kind of deal. So it's a bit of a shame that it's locked and you can't use it. It's basically Apple are bricking their phones, make you want to buy a new one instead. That's, you know, it seems to be quite prevalent. I mean, I can understand from a theft perspective, wanting to stop people from, you know, discourage people from stealing phones by making them useless to them. But when it's an insurance written off item, really that's a bit of a different ball game. It's like, it's a parts thing now. But of course Apple don't want you fixing it and stuff, do they? They don't want you to go and buy a new one. So anyway, I've got a board here I can use for parts. So that's the parts board potentially there. Then the problem is if it's the Wi-Fi chip, hey, it's starting to boot. Asking for a passcode. This isn't supposed to be locked. Why is this asking for a passcode? I'm going to have to get older the guy and say, why is there a passcode on it? 
if it's iCloud locked it'll be annoying because then I have two phones which I can't use. The idea is to get one which I can use. Right, how many goes do you get? Six. Okay, it's not that. That's helpful. That could be of a hindrance, isn't it? So anyway, boot it up. It's showing as the battery is charging, it's only 3% right now. Anyway, I'll have to email the guy and say, why has it got a passcode on it? It better not be iCloud locked, that'd be annoying. A couple of things that could be wrong with it. it could be Wi-Fi, or it could be the um, what the hell is it called? TriStar.